Welcome to Tanakh Talk. I'm your host, Julie Taylor, hosting from Palmer, Alaska, broadcasting live out of Kingsland, Texas, with another episode of Women's World with Leah Michelson from the Holy Land of Israel. Welcome back to Women's World. Last week we had our premiere show. We had a great time introducing ourselves and letting everybody know what the show is going to be about. Welcome everybody back. And how are you, Miss Leah? Shalom. It's so wonderful to be here. And first off, Julie, mwah, so good to see you. Uh, you too, my dear. <laughs> what, wonderful to be back. Wonderful. Yes. So how was your week? It was it was hectic, um, but uh, hopefully it'll be a little bit less hectic this week. I think Definitely. after the show, I'm going to have to go shovel snow because we got a big old blizzard going on right now. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, just be careful with all of that. Absolutely. I, just, I remember those days well. Yeah. <laughs> it's one thing I don't miss. And we haven't had snow yet here in spot. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like maybe just some light little flurries but nothing yeah. on the ground so it's been about five years since we've had some really big storms okay so, but, All right. so it happens but i don't know that it's going to happen now i think if i want to see snow i'm going to have to go up to the hermon mount hermon or come to alaska yeah definitely <laughs> one day you know yes. if it's Hashem, god willing that'll happen that so. would be awesome yeah, so, yeah. What, um, what's happening in Israel? Uh, well, let's see. It's There's been a lot going on. Um, it was a little bit of a stressed week. Um, I, I've just been seeing so much, like, fighting back and forth between each other. Today is election day here in Israel, so we already went and voted. This okay. is our third elections. <laughs> And it, it's crazy. We're we're really hoping that this one goes through and that they'll be able to form a government. The last two times, it's just like balanced out and the arguing back and forth. And so right. it, it's just there's so much hate speech going on back and forth. And, and I know that's happening in the U.S. as well. Yeah. And it was interesting at um, I was at. Uh, friends, my husband and I were at friends for um, Shabbat lunch, and politics came up. Not oh, a conversation boy. really you sh should be having at a Shabbat table. Right. And and I mean, there were just some really hateful things said that from some a couple people, and I actually started to feel sick to my stomach oh. because it's just like oh, enough already and. So my husband Yitzhak actually wrote something on Facebook and he was talking about integrity and, you know, have we all reached a level of integrity or humility or a lack of sin where we can point our fingers at other people and, and question their integrity or a right to live? I mean, there were things that were saying said that were oh this person's a waste of human life and oh no right i it's just crazy and and he wrote about um how the midrash relates to when the egyptians were drowning in the sea after pursuing the hebrews who had fled mm -hmm. it said that the malachim the angels are singing praises to hashem and Hashem silences them and says, my creation is being destroyed and you are praising me. So it's like we're just I, we have a lot of work to do, right. really. And just right. trying to speak with one another and how we treat each other. And on a positive note, it was it was great. Actually, um, there's smaller parties. Um, and there's one called Yamina with Naftali Bennett and Ayelet Shaked. Uh -huh. And Ayelet Shaked worked as the justice minister for a few years up until 2019. And Naftali Bennett is our defense minister. So we're really happy that he's in because he's not for um, 
giving up any land in Israel, you know, letting, not taking anything from Hamas or Hezbollah yeah, or just good. every, you know, because the rockets continue to be fired into Israel. And that's what we deal with. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't necessarily up here in the north, but it's always a possibility for us because sure. we're so close to the Lebanon border. Sure. But it happens for the people in the south. But goodness, I can't even uh, imagine living like that. <clears throat> you know, yeah. hearing rockets all the time and sirens. I mean, that's just got to be so unsettling. Yeah, it's very hard for the people in the South yeah. when that happens. So, but we actually got a personalized message from Ayala Chaked. Oh, so I'm going to see if I can play it for you. I'm hoping I'm picking the right one. Dear Lori and Yitzhak, please vote Yamina Tedbet. I'm counting on you. <laughs> His vote, I'm they're kidding. like wow something came from on high you know <laughs> oh, that's, that's so great. it was a blessing interesting so, yeah so so when will with, you know the results later t today uh, or they probably uh, i want to say like maybe around you know 10 o'clock our time here so okay. I know Eastern time, I believe that'll be like three o'clock central. I think it'll be okay. two. I'm I'm trying to figure out the time in my head. It's like all the different yeah. time zones. So so we'll see. We're really trying to stay positive and hopeful that it's it's going to happen this time. Yeah. Um, I know the rights will actually recommend um, BB. Um, Benjamin Netanyahu mm -hmm. for prime minister. And so then it's up to our president, Rivlin, uh, to actually hand over. And they get a period of time where they can form a government, but they have to do it within a period of time. And they need 61. And right now, just according to the polls over the months that were at 59. So that's why it was so encouraged for some people to vote for Yamina and you know, yeah. for some of the smaller parties. So that way we get more seats. So then it'll, it'll actually push us over and we'll actually have a government. We've been well, without a government now for a year. Yeah. Formed. I mean, we have all the ministers and everything, but the actual formation of the government. And they're already okay. talking about an election date in September. Okay. So well, we put our hands up and we say, okay. We'll, we'll <laughs> see what happens. So. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, so, so what are we talking about today with these oh. ladies? And, and I heard there might be a few gentlemen watching. Yes, uh, I know the men were encouraged to join us this week because uh, we're going to talk about how women are viewed in Torah. Excellent. And so exciting. And But I want to preface this, and I know, Julie, you and I talked about this um, because we're going to hear so much about the women and different roles and things that Hashem says and about us as women right. and the ladies I just it's to encourage you yes. and to empower you but it's not it's not to and I'm not saying that this is going to happen but just we us as women we need to be careful I know there's a lot of um, feminism or women's lib and and I know I'm dating myself when it's like with Helen Reddy I am woman hear me roar <laughs> because we're we're so much more than that right right and so it's just to let you all know how we as women are viewed in Torah right so so according to traditional Judaism uh, we as women are given an extra measure of Bina than men. So, okay, what is Bina? Bina means understanding. And so the rabbis inferred this from the idea that woman was built rather than formed. So, and we can see this when we look in Bereshit in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. It says, And Hashem formed man out of the dust from the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the soul of life, and man became a living soul. Beautiful. So then it goes on into verse 2, 22. It says, And Hashem built the side that he had taken from man into a woman, and he brought her to the man. So That's the woman beautiful. was built, right? It is. It re it really is. I mean, yeah. when when you really start diving in 
to all of this is just the beauty that comes out. It it's right. just it's wonderful. So yeah. the Hebrew root of of the word is build has the same consonants as the word bina. The root of build, which is beit nun hey, is very similar to the word bina beit yud nun hey, which means mm. understanding, insight, or intuition. So I wanted to bring in a little bit of the Kabbalah and talking about the Kabbalistic tree of life. And so it's, it's a tree and it has all the sephirot on it. And so I'm only going to talk just a little bit about it, but on the tree of life, the Kabbalistic tree of life. So at the very top, and I guess like at the top here, um, is Keter, which means crown. And across from underneath and to the right of that is Chochmah, and directly, I'm losing my train of thought. So, and then to the left, <laughs> I'm just, I'm excited about this. It's okay. And, so, and Chochmah means wisdom. So, Bina meaning understanding. So, Bina sits on the level below and to the left. And Chachma, as I said, sits below and to the right. It sits directly across from Bina. And Bina is referred to as Ima, mother. mother. And Chachma is Abba, father. Yeah, that's beautiful. So to get an idea, it's, for example, like when a man brings wool to a woman. So we're looking back in those times, the husband brings home the wool and the woman spins the wool and she makes things from that. So it's like he brings the idea or he brings something to her and then she takes it and creates something. So now, of course, we're not necessarily spinning wool these days. So, <laughs> But that can apply to anything that you're working together on or helping your husband do as a joint effort no yes. matter what it is yeah right right absolutely and and so there are many great women in tanakh and women have held positions of respect in judaism since biblical times right. so for instance the midwives who rather than participating in the killing of the firstborn helped the jewish women to bring multiple children into the world Moshe's mother, Yochaved, a Levite woman, chose to hide her son, Moshe, and along with her daughter, Miriam, are considered the original liberators of the people of Israel. Mm. We also have one of the judges, Devorah, was a woman. Yes. It is taught by our sages that the matriarchs, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, were superior to the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in prophecy. So seven of the 55 prophets of the Bible were women. So ladies, are you getting a little bit of an idea of <laughs> how women are viewed? Yes. And so it's just to really encourage and strengthen you. And so we have other great women. There are so many great women in Tanakh. We have Chava, Eve, who was the mother of life, Hannah, Ruth, and Naomi, and Esther, Hadassah, who we will be speaking about next week, because next week is going to be Purim. Yay! So, yeah, it, it's great. It's exciting. And exciting things coming up, right, Julie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a special surprise next week, too. Yeah. So you guys will want to stay tuned. You yeah. ladies will want to stay tuned. <laughs> yes, definitely. And, and we'll give you a reminder at the end as well. Yeah. So as far as like business insight and traits, Proverbs 31 speaks about that. So in 3111, her husband relies on her and he will lack no gain. In 13, it says she seeks wool and flax and she works with it with the will of her hands. So here again, we bring in the story of the wool, which can mean other things as you talked about with between husbands and wives. Right. So in 16, she contemplates a field and purchases it. From the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. And I know, Julie, you had mentioned when we were talking during the week, you had asked about, well, what about like women can purchase things? Because absolutely, in today's time, we absolutely can purchase right. things. Right. Or land or vineyards. And verse 18, she advises that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out at night. 
So it's just even more so of how we are as women in Tanakh. And there's something really beautiful that happens on Shabbat. And it's Eshet Chayel, which means a woman of valor, which is something that is sung on every Arab Shabbat, on every Friday evening. So it originated with the mystics of Tzfat, and specifically students of Rabbi Isaac Luria, who is the Arizal, and as a way of greeting the Shekhinah, the divine presence, and how we say the Shabbat queen. So the Kabbalists explain that Shabbat night is referred to as a queen and also called Eshet Chayel, and this is from the Talmud. So we sing Eshe Chayel to welcome the Shabbat queen. So it's a way of express, expressing gratitude to the women of the house to sing praises on her Friday night after she's worked tirelessly. And I know with Shabbat, it's like there's always that pre-Shabbat prep. It's like I'm prepping on Thursday and Friday comes and it's like it's rush, rush, rush. And you're trying to get everything done so you can be ready to shut down. Yep. And so it's like you get into it and it's like all of a sudden you sit down, and you're kind of like, oh, <laughs> literally, because it's just because we're just working and working to do that. So that way we can greet the Shabbat queen in royal fashion. So Eshe Chayel says she rises when it is still night. She gives food to her household and an allotted share to her maidens, which comes from Proverbs 31, 15. The blessing of food for the household comes from Shabbat. That's so, pretty beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So sitting around a Shabbat table and that being sung is just a really... It's just beautiful in welcoming the Shabbat queen. You know, we've already lit our candles. We're sitting at the table. We're ready to do Kiddush. You know, we do Kiddush and and um, the blessing over the wine and then and sing Eshet Chayel. So it's like our start. I mean, we've already been in shul and we're already saying all our prayers and then we're just continuing on in the welcoming of the Shabbat queen. So I want to get into talking about obligations to perform commandments. So, okay. and I want, I want to share a story <laughs> with you all um, of our shul. And for those that aren't familiar, shul is another word for synagogue. So we say, for me, I say shul. Um, and so our shul in Del Rey. And it's interesting because they took out the prayer where men are thanking Hashem for not making me a woman. Uh, so, and it was out of concern for making a woman feel bad. So, and I know when you first hear it, it's kind of like, well, why are they praying not to make themselves a woman? It's like, mm -hmm. what's wrong with that? So the prayer is not about making a woman feel bad. Right. It's, it's just that men have more obligations than women do. So one who does something because he is regarded, who is commanded to do something, is regarded with greater merit than one who does something because he chooses to. Right. And so it's a prayer that the men say to thank Hashem because it gives them that opportunity. They have more obligations to obtain greater merit. And so it's not a bad prayer. It's right. actually, it's a wonderful prayer. It's like if commanded to do something like, so for instance, and we might hear things on this afterwards, um, but so, and keeping kosher, so we're commanded not to eat pork. So, so you have a person that will do it because they're commanded not to, to obtain the merit rather than someone who, you know, decide doesn't do it just because he doesn't like the taste. So there's a little right. bit of that a difference. That wouldn't be it's, very difficult. Right. Right. So it's really more of the intentions. 
So the intentions is, is because, well, Hashem has commanded this of us. Right. Whereas someone else was saying, well, I just don't want to do it because I don't like it. Right. So another thing is women partner with Hashem in creation. So that's another way to look at how women are held high in Torah, are held high in Tanakh. We partner with Hashem in creation. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. So there's also, um, we're going to get into a little something here about marital relations. So men, it's this is for you as well. Because we're going to get into more relationships with one another. So I'm going to read this to you. It's halakha. And it's marital relations as the woman's right, not the man's. And um, halakha and is law. This is in right? halakha in the law. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And so this is from Evan Ezer Simon 25. It's the last part of Evan Ezer, which means the stone of help. It was a compilation of Rabbi Yaakov ben Asher, who was known as the Tor, which was later adapted by Rav Yosef Karo in the Shulchan Aruch. So here it is. This is what Halakha says. He should not have frequent intercourse so that he is always with her, for this is extremely detrimental and it is the way of bores, bores meaning unmannerly person. It is meritorious to minimize inter intercourse, only keeping in the minimum required marital obligations. Even when fulfilling marital obligations, he should not focus on his pleasure. It should instead be as on paying back an obligation, for he is obligated in marital duties and to fulfill the mitzvah of being fruitful and multiplying, and to have children who study Torah and perform its vote for the people of Israel. He may not have intercourse without her consent, and if she is not interested, he should appease her until she is interested. He should be very private during intercourse, having no people of any kind around, even a child, unless it is a baby who cannot speak. Mm. So this speaks a lot to in how we treat one another as men and women, right. husbands and wives. Um, and what this said is contrary to Christian beliefs. So, exactly. right. So, which, Julie, you're well aware of. Right. Well, um, all through the New Testament, it talks about women being submissive and um, basically doing whatever your husband says whenever he wants and, you know, that's pretty much the opposite of what Torah says. And I, I definitely want to bring out some of those points because we have women watching that are, you know, from all walks of life and all different religions. And um, we might find ourselves still in that mindset even after we've left the church. So, so hearing what the, what the Jewish perspective is, is so good for all of, for all of us to remind us that we are queens. We are, you know, beautiful and, and esteemed and have rights. Absolutely. We're not, yeah, we're not servants. We have rights. Right, and this shouldn't be a forceful thing. Women shouldn't be forced. And, but also ladies, this is not something to use. And, and I, we, I, when I say all of you, I'm speaking all of us because I speak this to myself as well. This is not to be used as a weapon or for manipulation. Right. With something to hold like that. Hostage. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's it's so important in how we treat one another as husbands and wives, and even for the singles, how you treat one another. And for the single men and single women, how you look at one another. It's like you should look at the spiritual aspect of a person. I mean, yes, you see the physical, and we have to be very careful in right. that. But in the spiritual aspect, you're looking at one of Hashem's creations. So, Julie, when I look at you, I'm looking at this beautiful, amazing woman. You are one of Hashem's 
beautiful, gorgeous creations. You shine inside and out. And so we really should look at one another as one of Hashem's creations. And right. for how we look, how we talk with one another, and I know that can be difficult, especially with the things that are happening, like we talked about in the beginning of the show. Right. Um, my husband and I, um, you know, many of you know I'm Rabbi Yitzchak. I'm very blessed. We've been married for almost 22 years. And I can tell you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We've, we've known each other for, I want to say, 27 plus years. I mean, we were just really good friends. We yeah. Just an amazing story and an incredible journey. And And so he treats me like a queen. And I treat him like a king. We yeah. just, we really love each other um, in, I can tell you, in 22 years of marriage, I think if if and when we do ever argue, which is so rare, I think it's, I, can't, I can count on one hand, it doesn't right. last more than five minutes because we've learned. And that's yeah. something, ladies, we can also talk about yeah, yeah. in another show as well, you know, and the things to do, because I know there are relationships that are very difficult and it's not just in marriage it's in our relationships that we have with everyone else um, right. i had i had a family member that i actually cut off for i want to say seven years because they it was just some really bad things happened to the point where it really went past that line right it was just I'll, I'll just it just it wasn't good it was just there were a lot of hurt and, but I can tell you that there's been reconciliation. There's been healing Good. now, and it's Good. we're go and we're moving forward. And it's amazing, and it's so wonderful because it actually was painful for me. Oh yeah, to have to not be able to talk with this person. I don't want to not be able, but I just I I cut it off because it just sometimes, you know, for me I had to. But and it's right. just I know how difficult that can be, and. And I might be sending off some flags right now <laughs> with some of you out there. But it's something we can talk about further Yeah, in another show. But it's just, it's really important that we just treat each other really respectfully. And for right. husbands and wife, like, you know, look, at, husbands, look at your wife as a queen. I mean, right. she is. She's a beautiful queen and a gift. So um, last week. We celebrated Rosh Chodesh Adar. Are you familiar with Rosh Chodesh? Yes, the beginning of the month, right? Uh, yes, it absolutely is. It's and it's the beginning of the month or the birth of the new moon. So we're in Adar, and Adar is known as a month of joy and celebration. Rosh Chodesh is centered around the woman. And so according to Talmud, women are forbidden to engage in work on Rosh Chodesh. Okay, why is this? You know, she's, it's, um, and it comes from Rashi commenting that uh, she's forbidden to work because it delineates the activities from which she must refrain. Spinning, uh -huh. weaving, sewing. And these are the skills that actually contributed to the building of the Mishkan. The women were involved in the building of the Mishkan. The we should mention. We should mention yes that the Mishkan is the portable tabernacle that they yes. took around in the desert with them before they had the temple. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Just to clarify for some of the people that might be new, so um, I want everybody to understand all all, all of our lingo. <laughs> <laughs> and I really appreciate that because sometimes I forget because I'm so used to this. But I just thank you for yep. the reminders and that we stop. And so we can explain to all of you about this. So excuse me one moment. Uh, I've been talking quite a bit and I get a little dry. <laughs> so um, in the Midrash... And for those that want to know, the Midrash Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer explores this prohibition. Well, why were women forbidden? You know, for Rosh Chodesh, why are you really forbidden? You really shouldn't do any work. So it shows that Aaron argued with himself, saying, If I say to Israel, 
give me gold and silver, they will bring it immediately. But I will say to them, give me the earrings of your wives and sons, and the latter will fail, as it is said. And Aaron said to them, break off the golden rings. So the women heard this, and they were unwilling to give their earrings to their husbands and said to them, you desire to make a graven image without any power in it to deliver. So Hashem gave the women their reward in this world and in the world to come. What reward did he give them in this world? So that they should observe the new moons more stringently than the men. And what reward did he give them in the world to come? That for we as women are destined to be renewed like the new moons, as it is said, who satisfies their years with good things so that their youth is renewed like the eagle. This wow. is so beautiful. It is beautiful. I love it. Yeah. So it's, it's Rosh Chodesh is for women. So on Rosh Chodesh, and I've been to some Rosh Chodesh gatherings, and it, it's just an amazing time. And so on Rosh Chodesh, women don't work at all. And there may be some that will just abstain from household chores, like laundry, sewing, or whatever else that they would, excuse me, would consider as work. Yeah. So, and the men will take care of the children and any other household things. So the women are then free. So we attend gatherings, and it could be a musical gathering. We spend time in learning Torah, exploring spirituality, other topics that we may want to talk about, or and we sing. And it's a beautiful time to be together. And it's a time where we're, we're lifting each other up and we're strengthening each other. So it's just, it's an amazing time. Absolutely amazing. And so, you know, what can we see in everything that we've talked about so we need to see ourselves as Hashem sees us we're beautiful we're strong we're amazing we shine from inside and out we're Hashem's beautiful creations yes excellent yeah so I wasn't sure if we were going to have time for everything. <laughs> no, so, I know. You never can gauge how much, I know. How much material. Um, did you want to uh, talk a little bit about the, well, what we talked about earlier in the week about respect and mutual, or is that going to be on another show? Um. Well, we, we have some time. Um, I know it's a, a bit of a touchy subject. Um, and I think it, but it does fall into really how we see one another. Right. And, and we really need to be careful in not demeaning each other, especially in public. Oh. And I know there's, I'll give you two words, reaction and response. <clears throat> So when something happens, we can either, and it upsets us, we can either react, you know, you might get angry and something comes out and we react and it's like, ah, 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 you know, right. and then things come out of your mouth or take a moment, take a breath and breathe. But I know in relationships and that with her husband and wife, brother and sister, friends, that things happen and we just have to be careful in how we're talking with one another and trying to work things out. And right. I mean, there have been times for me where, I mean, some nasty things have been said, have been said to me, or I just may have reacted instead of responding. And so mm -hmm. it's really, it's really important that we continue to work on ourselves. Right. And work these things out. But you know, if it's something that's ongoing and if you, because you mentioned you had seen a woman in a store. Right. And, and it, she was just like, it, it bothered you. She was really being really nasty to her husband. And so we have to take a step back 
in that because we don't know the whole situation. I mean, it's very disheartening and disconcerting to see something like that, and we don't want to see something like that, but we also have to look at the fact that we don't know what's going on. I mean, maybe nothing is going on, and then this is just how the relationship is. And so mm-hmm. we just pray for that person, you know, that, that mm-hmm. Hashem should touch them and, and help and heal in their relationship, and that, um, you know, or if there is something going on, and if we have an opportunity to reach out and to help someone, but the person also has to be open right. to it. Right. And I just want to encourage all the ladies to to just, you know, um, if you want to be treated like a, a queen, then you need to treat your husband like a king because, you know, it goes both ways. And I know this show is mostly directed at the women, but I don't want the guys to feel left out that, hey, right. wait a minute, what about me? It's not all about her, you know? Okay. Right. Right. But, um, yes, ladies, be careful about how you talk to your husband, and, and especially in public, because they deserve respect and, um, you know. And the same for men. And yeah. how both of, both of them. For both. Yeah. And for all of our relationships. It's something that we all need to work on. Yes. And especially when we talked about in the beginning of the show with, with the elections and... And the fighting and just, I mean, it's just such hatred. And it's like, I wonder sometimes, oh, Hashem, oh, how are, how are you, see, you know, you're looking at all of this and it's like, my creation, this is what's going on. Right. How much so, more bothers him than us, for sure. Right, right. And yeah. so we just need to continue to work on ourselves. Ladies, yeah. just be encouraged, just be strengthened. You know, just continue to blossom and shine bright. We all have a light. And as we continue to work on ourselves, let us just let our light shine even brighter out into this world and just continue to work. So, oh, man, that we yes. think sweetly. And so we have a great show for next week. Yes, we've we been do. talking about this. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I think we've been talking about this for at least a week or two. Yeah. Um, some fun things. And uh, we will be talking about Esther. So the her queen. as a woman. Yeah. <laughs> An amazing woman. An amazing woman. So, and I'm looking at some things regarding Vashti. Okay. I thought about some things. So, so we'll see. But I mean, just we want to talk about Purim. We're going to be talking about the Megillot. There's different Megillah that are read on different Chagim, different holidays. So on Purim, we you'll you'll find out more next week <laughs> with it. For those so. ladies that don't know about the holiday of Purim, do you want to give a little, just a little recap? For Purim, oh my goodness! Um, for Purim, it was a time where uh, the Jews again were going to be killed, wiped out um, in Shushan. And um, it's a story about their freedom. Yes. And fighting. So, and Esther plays a big part in that. So I don't really want to give away too much. Yeah. Because we're really going to talk about more next week. Um, But it it really is, it's an exciting time here in spots. Oh my goodness. When we were, because on election day, there's no work. So all the kids are out of school, people are out in the streets. I mean, there are restaurants and bakeries and, you know, some stores will stay open. Uh I I haven't seen it this crowded in a while. I mean, everybody was out and they're all the Purim costumes are out. And so everybody's with the Purim costumes or they're out in the restaurants. It's just it's it becomes a big family day here, even on Election Day when there's no work. That's so all the families are together. So, yeah, so everybody's preparing for a Purim. I've already got some things set aside. As, and, Julie, I know you do, too. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to learn to make those cookies that I can't pronounce. Home and Tashin. <laughs> yeah. Home and Tashin, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that, too. Yeah. And with Haman. Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> 
Well, it looks like we're running out of time. And yeah. We will see you all next week. Look forward to it. All right. Hello, you everyone. A blessing, Leah. Thank you. You are too, Julie. Oh